the non-coincidence at, at the same time, the proximity which define contemporary contemporaneous, ground on the contiguity to the origin that nowhere beats so strongly as in the present. He who saw for the first time arriving by boat at sunrise the skyline of New York immediately perceived his archaic face of modernity, his pungency to the ruins that the images of September 11 made evident for everyone. Historian of literature and art know that between the archaic and the modern there is a secret date. And not only because the most archaic, archaic forms seem to uh, cast a peculiar spell into the present, but also because the key to modernity is hidden in the immemorial and the, in the prehistoric. This is why the ancient world, at its decline, turns back to its beginnings, and the avant-garde, which lost itself in time, pursues stubborn the primitive and the archaic. In this sense, one can say that the access to contemporaneous takes necessity the form of an archaeology. An archaeology does not go back to a distant past, but to what, within the present, we cannot in any case live, and therefore remain unlived, is unceasingly sucked down as in a whirlpool towards the origin, without ever reaching it. The present is the share of the unlived in every life. And what blocks the way to the present is precisely the bulk of what, for some reason, its traumatic character, its unbearable proximity, remains unlived. The curve, the attention for this unlived in the life is contemporary. To be contemporary means, in this sense, to go back to a present in which we have never appeared. Those who try to think contemporaneous could do it only on condition that they were able to divide in different times to introduce in it an essential disomogeneity. He who can say, my time, divides time, inscribes in it a cesura and a discontinuity. And yet, it is precisely through this cesura, through this interpolation of the present into the inner homogeneity of linear time, that the contemporary can establish a special relationship between the times. If, in Mandelstam's words, the contemporary is the one who broke the vertebrae of the time, or at least perceived their line of fracture, then he makes of this fracture the place of an appointment or of a secret meeting between times and generations. A perfect example of this is Paul, when he announces to his brothers that contemporaneous par excellence, which is the messianic time, the being contemporary to the messiah, which he calls the now time, or new chaos. Not only is this time chronologically undeterred, the parousia, the second coming of Jesus, is certain and imminent, but cannot be fixed chronologically. But it has also the peculiar capacity of establishing a connection with any moment of the past, of transforming in any event of this past, any event of the past history of humanity in a prophecy or a foreshadowing of the present. This means that the contemporary is not only the one who perceives in the darkness of the present grasp its unfulfilled light, it is also the one who, dividing and breaking off time, is able to transform it and to put in relation with other times, 
reading history in new light and citing it according to a necessity which comes not from his will but from an exigency to whom it has to respond. It is as if the unfulfilled light which is contained in the night of the present cast its shadow on the past so that the past touched by this black light suddenly acquires the ability to respond to the darkness of the present. I think it's something of uh, this kind that uh, Foucault meant when he wrote that this historical investigation of the past are only the shadow long of his theoretical questioning of the present. And then, when he wrote that the historical index which is contained in any image of the past tells us that it comes to visibility only at the same moment. Our capacity of being contemporary depends on our ability to listen to this exigency and to these shadows. I'm in your shorts, the picture. <laughs>